Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Worn in Black month. So today we're going to look at the very first film adaptation of the story that was a 1989 movie made for British television and it's my personal favorite version of the story put to film. So let's get into it. So the movie is about Arthur Kidd yeah, not Arthur Kipps, Arthur Kidd. For some odd reason, they changed quite a few characters' last name in this movie, like Samuel Daly is now Samuel Tooby, and yeah, they just keep on doing that, and it's just really just with those two characters, maybe because we don't really learn the other characters' names and the last names in the book, I don't know. Janet 
Travlo, who was the one in black, decides, eh, I shall call the dog Spider over here. So, yeah, the dog goes running after her, and then Arthur tries really hard to get back his only companion in this place. Bentley. 
Jock of all shocks, or at least I assume that's Mr. Bentley. They never really say his name in it. Either that or I missed it, but yeah, they might have changed his name pointlessly. I don't know, but yeah, it's pretty much the exact same character of Mr. Bentley. And pretty much, he just sort of says that, yeah, alright, you, you did good, but just just take a few days off. You, you've earned it. You, you put your own health set on the on the line here so yeah he decides yeah okay I will but then he does find out that the one chest that he kept of all the stuff from Eel Marsh house is still very much around and is even sent to his office and then one of the people who work there says that there's a woman in black waiting outside and then he also hears the pony and trap I mean it doesn't actually fall into any marsh, but it does hear it, and when he looks outside, there is no horse. So, yeah, pretty much, she's not dead yet. So, he comes to the very rational conclusion that he just has to burn the whole entire thing, and that'll just save the day. Because that's how that's gonna work. So, naturally, he decides to take it home and just has a nice little bonfire. Okay, no, of course he doesn't do that. No, what he does is he decides, I'm gonna go grab some gasoline, no one will question this in my banking office for some reason, really, no one questions that, I don't get that. He's walking out with a can of gasoline, and no one's just like, hey, what are you doing? But, yeah, he goes, gets some gasoline, and sets it all ablaze, and burns up his office. Amazingly, people don't really think he's in the best state of mind anymore after that. And then he tries to kill his boss for sending him there. The rational thing to do. So yeah, amazingly after trying to kill your boss, he's fired. Shocking. So yeah, now he at least has some time to spend with his family. Oh, and by the way, just so you know, yeah. He's got two kids in this version. In the book, his wife was pregnant, and they only had kids until the very end, and they only had one. In this movie, they do have a they do have an infant with them, which actually does follow the book, and they do have that at the very end, but she wasn't pregnant with him the whole time, and also they have another son named Eddie. So yeah, there's just that little minor change in there. But eventually, he does see that the one in black is still very much alive, and they're killed. All of them. And the movie ends. Happy ending! So, yeah, outside of the very few differences from the book, which honestly did kind of get to me after a little bit, that's really not that much to pay for an actually really, really good adaptation of this story. The overall premise of this movie does follow the book very, very well, and it's just for a few minor little changes that it actually differs. For the most part, it does follow it. And it actually does follow it really well. There are a lot of really creepy moments in this movie. Even if you can tell they didn't have much of a budget, it is still a really good execution of the story. There are quite a lot of moments that really does take time to just let the whole entire atmosphere of the actual idea and everything going around with the woman in black just set in. Also, one thing I want to bring up is that is the Eomarsh house, which... Honestly, I just really like the design of this place. Now, why I want to bring this up is a little bit as to what I'll talk about when I actually talk about the remake of this movie, but it's mainly what I actually want to bring up and how it differs from most haunted houses and movies. Now, usually in haunted house movies or just overall movies with creepy houses in them, they're usually very darkly lit and Everything about them just seems creepy from the offset, so you just sort of question why someone would even go in there. But in this movie, it's not like that. The house is actually very welcoming, it just sort of looks a little bit run down, and just sort of the place where it's at on a marsh is just kind of off. But outside of that, it actually does seem like a really welcoming place on the inside, with 
most of the walls being yellow and white. Then you get a little bit further in. It starts to get more orange as you go up and deeper into the house. Then it gets blue. Then when you actually get to the nursery, which, just so you know, is a very important part of the story as it does actually tie into Nathaniel, who is pretty much the reason that the woman in black exists, then the wall is pretty much gray and everything is black around it. I really do like how the deeper that you get into this house, the creepier it gets. Honestly, I just really like that change. I just really like how it, the, this house is designed. It's not normally like all other haunted houses where they're just creepy just because, you know, it's a haunted house. Therefore, it has to be creepy looking. No, it actually is very welcoming. It's just, just like the story of the one in black, the deeper that you get into it, the darker it becomes. So I really do like stuff like that. There are little details like that that... I really don't know if they were intentional for this movie, but really when I do go through and watch it again, it's stuff that I really do appreciate. Also, there is a, speaking of little things I like, just so you know, the name of the director actually does come up as a street sign in this movie. I really just love that bit. So, yeah, this movie actually does have a lot of good atmosphere built up. All the scenes actually do really spend a lot of time to be able to actually be scary, and they do let moments sit in. Although, I think that if you were just to watch a few clips of it online out of context, it's not really as good. I definitely recommend seeing how the story is executed, because it's done really well. As are the characters, but we'll get into them later. So, for the overall story, I'm going to give it... A 9 out of 10, mainly because there were little changes that were taken out, and also there were some moments that were my personal favorite bits in the book that are sadly not in this. Like, remember that one bit that I talked about where all the lights go out in the house, and that one really drags on for a while, even up to Kubrick level? Yeah, that moment lasts for like a minute in this movie, and that's really my biggest gripe with this, is that some of the moments that I really did like in the book, it kind of just cuts out. But they really do focus on the minor moments in it that actually I could have seen them be established much better. So that's something that I really do like. There are things that you can actually get out of this movie that you wouldn't get in the book. There are even some recurring scares that, honestly, I never saw coming while watching this movie. So... Yeah, for the overall story and its execution, 9 out of 10. I really do like how it's done. Although, the characters in it are also very well done, so let's talk about them. So, for the characters, let's start off with the main one, Arthur Kidd. Who, fun fact, was played by the same guy who played Harry Potter's dad in the Harry Potter movies. And then when the 2012 version of The One in Black came out... Harry Potter himself, Daniel Radcliffe, played Arthur. Well, he didn't play Arthur Kidd, but he played Arthur Kipp, because in that one, they actually used his real last name. Which I guess is one more thing that that one did better than this one. I still hate that one! But, yeah. That's just kind of a little fun fact, and I can actually bring up this actor again when we get to the sequel to the 2012 one, but we'll talk about that when we get there. So, for Arthur Kidd, he actually does follow the character in the book really well. Except there is one change to him that I actually really do like. And it is kind of a minor change, but something that I really did like. It's that we do get to see how much of a toll learning about the truth and what's going on with the woman in black takes on him. We get to see that much more in this movie. Well, yes, it does get explained in the books, and you do get to see how much of a toll it does take on him there. I feel like in this one, just seeing the actor go through it and see, and just seeing this actor who was really, really good in this movie, just seeing how he reacts to everything, I really did like. And honestly, I feel like that's a little thing that I liked a little bit more than the books, is that we do get to see him and how much of a toll this actually does take on him. And it is done a bit more than one than one was in the book, although he is still the very likable character, and you really do want to see him get out of this, and 
honestly, that makes the ending of this one a little bit harsher, because in the book, he does live. In this one, he might have lived, because it's just a branch falling on them, but then again, it's a very big branch, and they do hold on that shot for a while, with no one coming out. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that he's dead, although that could be hinting that he might have still been alive, but still, we never got a sequel to this one, so we'll never know, unfortunately, but I do still really like this character, and it, honestly, I really didn't want to see him die. He's a very likable character, and one that I really enjoyed following. And then after him, we have Samuel Tooby, who, as much as in the book, I do really enjoy this character. He's very well written, and honestly, the actor does a great job portraying him. He does, he is a very great character, although, the one thing that I didn't really like that was changed is that the fact that one of his children died due to the one in black isn't really given that much of a focus. It is focused on very little in the book, too, but seriously, here it's just given a whole, like, three lines to acknowledge. That's pretty much where his wife, Mar Margaret Truvy, does come into play more, and in that we do get to see more of her actually having to deal with the loss of her son. And it's not to a ridiculous degree where she has dogs that she thinks are her children. God, I hate that remake so much! But still, yeah. I do actually really like how pretty much she's the side of him that's really grieving. So she actually does play a bit bigger of a role than just sort of being there in the book. She's kind of there and she, you can kind of see some hints in the book that yeah, she is really grieving. But... It's not up to the degree that it is in this movie, but we do get to see that more from Samuel Tooby, which, honestly, I feel like they could have done a little bit more focus on how much he misses his son and how this is a bit more personal for him, but, yeah, he is still a very likable character. Then we have Mr. Bentley. <laughs> Odd. This is one of the ver this is one of the characters in this movie that I really didn't like when changed. Mainly because in the book there's actually quite a bit of character put into him after everything that happens at Neil Marsh House. After everything that happens there, he sees how much of a toll this took on Arthur. And especially after losing his wife and child, he really does feel bad for him and does try and make things better any way he can. And in this movie, while we do see how he acts normally before all these events happen, and yeah, that is actually pretty much down to the letter as to how he was in the book, but then all of a sudden, when you expect him to actually feel sorry for Arthur, he doesn't. He feels sorry for, like, I don't know, like, a line, but then it's never acknowledged again, and he just goes back to being the, oh, I'm the mean boss guy character again. Even up to the point where Arthur decides he should strangle him. And you know what? They got no argument out of me there. You knew, didn't you? You knew all along, and you still love me! So, yeah, while I do like him more in the book, I really don't mind him here. He is alright, it's just, I really do feel like the extra bit added after everything that happens made him a much more interesting character than just the, oh, cliched, oh, I'm the boss guy and I'm mean, but I'm still a good boss, so, yeah. That's really the main problem that I had with him in this, is that he never really changes. And that's mainly what made the character interesting to me in the book. But, he's still alright. Then we have Alice Drablo, which, yes, that is the name of Mrs. Drablo. I forgot to bring that up in the book, when I reviewed the book, mainly because I didn't remember her name. 
But now it has been said in this movie, so I wrote it down and remembered it. I also did the same for Janet Drablo, who is the one in black, who I didn't even remember her first name at all. So yeah, I'm kind of glad that I wrote that down. So, Alice Drablo, there is still quite a bit of character put into her, and even though she's already dead when the movie starts and doesn't come back as a ghost, she is still pretty likable because mainly you do get to hear how much having to put up with her sister after she has died really took on her. Honestly, that is the part that I really do like with the change of it not being letters that they hear that Arthur Lawrence is from, it's on a recorder. That I really like mainly because that's how we actually get to hear all the stress in her voice. When you actually read the letters, you can pretty much assume how much stress is put in her voice, but when you actually hear her saying it, there's a lot more stress and emphasis, and just all around fear put in her voice, which honestly I really did like as a change. Now, I do like the letters, and they actually are referenced in this movie at one point, but, yeah, they're never opened, but they're referenced, which is kind of nice that they still acknowledge that they exist. But, I do really like hearing her voice on the record, mainly because then, you actually get to hear how worried she felt about all this, but she had to put up with it in, or in order to keep her sister away from the town. Which, yeah, sure, she still went out there sometimes, but, yeah, I still do like seeing that we do actually get to hear how much more emphasis is put in her. Then we get Janet Drablo, who, yeah, she's pretty much the exact same as she is in the book. There's really no way to change this character without getting her completely wrong remake. Yes, I still have a deep burning hatred for that movie. Deal with it. But, yeah, I do really like how she is done here. Pretty much she is given the same creepy atmosphere and subtle buildup that she's given in the book. In fact, she's given quite a lot of that, and there's only one jump scare with her in it, and honestly, that's the only jump scare in the movie, thank god. And it's actually really well done, and I do like how it's actually paced. Mainly because we don't get jump scares all throughout the movie, then we get one with her in it. That's how you do jump scares right. Remake. Hate that movie so much. God, I can't wait to rip that thing a new one. But... Yeah, I do still really like how Janet Drablo is handled in this movie. She's still handled in the exact same subtle way that she is in the book, with her still having an all-around creepy feel to her. So yeah, I really do like her here. Then we get Nathaniel Drablo, who... Yeah, there's much less emphasis put on him. He's still sort of the one that caused everything, and that's pretty much just his point in this. There's really nothing else to him, just... Pretty much... He died, and Janet got upset. <laughs> That's pretty much the big thing with him. Mainly, it's what he actually caused with Janet and Alice that actually makes him more interesting. But, like I said before, that's not really explained the best way. So, yeah, in this, he's not really the best. Then we got Eddie Kid. Meh. He's barely in it. He's the son of Arthur, and eh, it's alright. There's also Winifred Kid, and no, sadly, she is not like Winifred on Angel. Would have been awesome, but she she's there. She's a baby. I don't know what else am I supposed to say about a baby that's barely in the movie. She was there. That's pretty much all I got to say about her. So yeah, for for Arthur's kids, they're in it. I will at least say that Eddie Kid's actor is actually pretty good in this, mainly since he is very young, and he actually does deliver the lines pretty well, so I did really like that he is actually a pretty good kid actor. Now, did he ever go anywhere? I have no idea, but I do at least hope that he did, or at least maybe stuck to acting. I don't know. I really haven't looked into any of what he's done after this, so... I still got a project to do later. And then there's Stella Kid. Much, much less emphasis put on her. In the book, she actually is pretty much very supportive of Arthur. Here, there's 
there's not many scenes with her, it's pretty much just three. And while, yes, she was pretty underdeveloped in the book, she at least had a few more scenes than just three. Here, pretty much, yeah, it's just like three or five, really, and really, those are pretty short moments, where she's just sort of the really supportive wife, and there's no other character put into her, which, yeah, I guess is pretty much how she was in the book, but, mm, she she's alright. I guess that she does really follow the character in the book, though, as she pretty much gets the, pretty much about the same time, except book Stella got a little bit more, so, yeah, she's alright. So, for the characters overall, I'm going to give them an 8 out of 10, mainly because there are some changes with them that I really didn't like that much, and yeah, there are some moments where they're not really given as much character as I feel like they should, but there are still a lot of really good character moments put into them, and the actors are really, really good in this. Even for the people who don't have any real scenes, like there are these two guys at the bank, they actually get some development, as they're a little bit immature when we start off the movie, but at the end, you can definitely see that they've taken a lot more maturity on while Arthur was gone. I really like that stuff being put in the movie. So, yeah, even side characters that really aren't that important do get some development. So, for the characters overall, they're not the best, but, well, at least not compared to the book ones, but they are still really good. So, yeah, I really did like how they were done in this. It's just that there are some of them that I feel like they could have gotten a little bit more attention than they did. So, for this movie overall, I love it. It's a really great movie, and if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's actually on YouTube, which is where I first watched it. And ever since, I've been looking for other good B-horror movies. My attempts haven't been successful yet, but I'm still looking. So, yeah, maybe one day I'll find one as good as this, because this really was a great B-movie for horror, and I honestly really do like it. Even the low budget on it is used in a really well, in a really good way, mainly because then they can do much more subtle scares. I don't really know what they were going to originally do it that way, but didn't have money to do it to do it any other way or something, but it is still really well done. The horror in this movie is actually really subtle, and there are a lot of things that actually come back in it. And the characters are very likable. Even if they don't get that much screen time, you can still really like the characters. And you can actually see some character being put into them, even if they're just there for a few scenes. That's stuff in this movie that I really, really did like and appreciate. So, honestly, I really did love this movie. It's amazing, really. I just love it. Just for how much of a low budget you can tell they had, it's it's just a really amazing as to what they actually did with it. It's a really great horror movie, and if you've never seen it, which, yeah, you probably haven't, as, yeah, it's pretty obscure. You know, everyone's talking about that 1989 version of The Woman in Black. Sure, no one said that ever until I did. So, yeah, I definitely do recommend it. I do definitely recommend checking it out, as it's pretty much a pretty good gem to find. So, yeah, it's a really great movie, and I definitely do recommend checking it out. It's very subtle, and it's in its approach in horror, and the story and characters are really well done, and the characters are very likable in it. And I also do like the connection with actors in between film adaptations of this, which yes, I will talk about again later, because there's actually more to talk about with that. So, for this movie overall, I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10, mainly because there are a few things that are changed for no reason, but then again, if you haven't read the book, then you don't really mind them, and honestly, that's how I went to this movie. This was the very first version of The Woman in Black I ever saw, so I really, really do like just being able to watch it without having read the book. That's probably the best way to watch it. Then, after you've read the book, I definitely do recommend checking it out again. You can notice little things that you didn't before. 
And honestly, whenever I watch this movie again, that's pretty much what I can say about it. I can see a lot of things I didn't before. Like the stuff in the house that I brought up earlier with the colors and everything. I didn't notice that until like my third viewing of this movie. I've seen this movie like five times. I love it that much. So yeah, 9 out of 10. I really do like how this movie was done and I definitely recommend checking it out. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it for this, and finally, next week, I get to talk about the remake. Cannot wait to destroy that movie. I hate it a lot. Just say that. I really, really, really hate that movie. So that should be fun to talk about. 